All right, guys, we got a real special pistol to talk about. This is a SIG P210. Oh, yeah, buddy. Let's have some fun. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. And uh, today we've got a very special pistol that we're going to be showing off for you. Uh, <laughs> the boys from Chris were uh, coming through town here and hanging out, and uh, they brought a bunch of cool toys for us to play with. And one of them, uh, they've got a new company called Edelweiss, and uh, they're importing a lot of crazy Swiss guns and stuff. Um, so really, really neat. Um, this is actually... A very, very interesting pistol, and they are highly collectible and very, very, very expensive as well, uh, just because, you know, due to the nature of the production numbers and everything like that. But these are really cool. This is a uh, 210, and this gun replaced the Luger uh, in Switzerland's arsenal uh, around 1949, and these pistols served in Switzerland from 1949 to about 1975, okay? Uh, really, really well made. Super, super nice. They're kind of a hodgepodge of different random gun designs kind of made into one design. Uh, the Luger was kind of expensive and, and laborious to produce. Um, and the Luger's a great gun. But, you know, by the time World War II was over, they're getting into, you know, around 1949, you're talking like getting way out of that kind of zone where they were just kind of in a holding pattern. So they realized that the Luger was kind of an outdated gun and they wanted something a little bit more modern. And uh, it takes lines from like the Browning system, it takes lines from the Tokarev, okay, because of the way that the hammer pack and everything drops in in like a little module, um, which is really cool. These guns are considered to be pretty much some of the most accurate and well-made service pistols in history. I mean, they're just wonderful. Um, dare I say, there's even things about this gun that are very similar to CZ-75 uh, in, in every regard, but um, they're just wonderful guns. They're um, single action. Okay, so you don't have a double action mode, single action only, eight shot magazine. And this is one of the first 500 guns sent to the border police. So this is a real early gun. This one's like a 1951, so like a second year production, uh, P210. The uh, gun that replaced this gun was the SIG P220. Okay, and you guys are probably familiar with that gun. We've done some videos on, uh, on that pistol before. Uh, expect some more. We'll actually have some other videos where we'll be showing you some of the kind of Swiss uh, rifle and pistol lineage. Uh, it's a really interesting uh, topic to, to talk about all the different Swiss uh, technology because, you know, a lot of people attribute the Luger to the German military. And yes, the Germans adopted the Luger in 1908, but the Swiss were actually the first military to adopt the Luger pistol. So the Luger has its lineage the most with Switzerland, and that's why the 210 is such a neat gun too. I mean, there are other countries that uh, adopted the 210, but this is pretty much a, a complete, you know, Swiss animal here in terms of, you know, its, its lineage and its heritage. Really smooth gun, really nice trigger. Uh, we are not going to be shooting this gun a heck of a lot today because this is a highly collectible pistol. There's not a lot of them out there. And, you know, they, they are highly collectible, hi highly in demand, and, uh, and they are a little bit pricey. Uh, we do have a original holster there, which is really cool. Okay, just a sweet, sweet gun and an example of a wonderful shooter. Uh, just a great original Swiss military pistol uh, that are very, very difficult to locate. And uh, they're just not quite out there like you would really think. So uh, really cool stuff. I'm gonna load up uh, another magazine. We're gonna shoot a couple more mags, try to shoot some groups, see what the little gun can do. But like I said, we're not gonna shoot this gun a ton in this video because it's highly collectible and really expensive and we don't wanna break anything on it. So uh, let me load a mag and we'll shoot a few groups. All right, guys, I'm gonna shoot a couple of groups with the uh, 210 here, just have a little fun. We're not gonna shoot this thing a ton, like I said, but I do wanna try to group it. I haven't really shot this gun much, so hopefully I can do her some justice. All right. Real accurate. 
more accurate than me, that's for sure. Uh, that was 124 grain ammo. Um, let's try some of the 147 grain pro match out of it uh, just to see how it slings that into a group. Um, I really haven't shot this gun a lot. This is my first exposure to a 210. Uh, and guys, to be fair, okay, this is not really the kind of gun that a lot of people are going to have a lot of access to. They are very expensive. They're highly collectible. Uh, it's not a firearm you're just going to find laying around anywhere, okay? Um, but uh, we're just trying to have a little fun and enjoy this uh, wonderful gun. These things are so neat. It would really be hard to own one of these and not take it out and shoot it and enjoy it and have fun with it. It is a heel magazine release, as we can see right here. Uh, it also utilizes a magazine disconnect safety. Uh, so that's another thing about this particular pistol. I guess that's sort of taken from the high power a little bit, you know, because a lot of the high powers have magazine disconnect safety. Single stack, which uh, keeps the frame nice and slim and lightweight. Um, man, what a wonderful pistol. All right, this is some 147 grain ammo. Hopefully I can do my part here. It's got a nice, really crisp single action trigger on it. I wouldn't say as good as a Luger, but definitely nice. Yeah, buddy, not bad, not too bad. For a military pistol and at combat uh, ranges, wonderful, wonderful accuracy, uh, which you know you really wouldn't expect anything less out of a Swiss-made pistol. And uh, look, guys, I'm, I'm just gonna be completely forthcoming honest with you here. Um, I've got a soft spot for Swiss guns, so you're not, <laughs> you're, not you're not really ever gonna see me say anything negative about a Swiss-made firearm because uh, I am a uh, huge Swiss military nut, and uh, the guys at Edel, Edelweiss, Edelweiss, listen to me, I can't, I can't say that word, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a dummy today, but the guys at Edelweiss, they realize that I'm a, I'm a Swiss uh, military nerd, so they wanted me to be able to fondle this thing a little bit before they have to cart her away. All right, very, very cool. There is a loaded chamber indicator on the top of the pistol. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. There's also a manual safety located on the left side of the gun, which is really cool. There's also on the top side of the frame this kind of stippling texture they put on there to help with glare, uh, and that's also something that's kind of cool. Uh, you know, really, for, for the time that this pistol was made, it's actually a very modern pistol when you think about the features that get carried over from the 210 onto the modern handguns that we see today. It's really a, a pretty modern gun. Okay. I'm gonna take some uh, shots at the sodas here. I'm not gonna shoot many more rounds because I don't wanna put a lot of wear and tear on this gun. This is not my gun, guys. This is a loner, I don't own it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't wanna break something on it. I'm gonna get sent a bill. And trust me, for what these things cost, I don't wanna see what a repair bill looks like. <laughs> All right, sodas. What? All right. All right, one for the gopher down there. Ah, oh, just to the side. All right, one more mag, guys. I think y'all get the point. I don't want to put a ton of rounds through this gun. You know, I can't imagine anybody that owned one of these, you know, even as a collectible, not taking it out and at least shooting it a little bit to really appreciate the engineering that goes into these older Swiss firearms. They're just so wonderful. You know, you think about a Swiss-made watch or something like that. I mean, they literally are fit and put together beautifully, just, just like a, a nice Swiss watch. And that's one thing I've always been able to appreciate about Swiss firearms, is just the attention to detail. Um, the lines that the guns have are just really kind of uh, form-fitting and attractive. And uh, what a wonderful handgun. The grips are nice. Just a great, great pistol. Okay, one more mag, and then we're gonna move on with life here.
not bad. I wouldn't say as accurate as my Swiss Luger, but for a service pistol, heck yeah, you can't beat it. Really cool gun. Uh, guys, thanks for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed yourselves today. We hope you learned a little bit of something. I didn't go into every little nut and bolt on this particular pistol because I didn't want this to be a terribly long video, but um, I wanted y'all to get a look at a Swiss pistol that a lot of people don't really get to take out to the range often. You don't really see a lot of videos on these. Um, it's a very obscure and rare uh, piece of Swiss military. And uh, since they were nice enough to bring it down and let us play with it, we thought we'd just shoot it for y'all and demonstrate it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Swiss firearm. Uh, I'd love to have one in my collection maybe one day. Uh, they do represent a pretty uh, considerable investment, but um, it's kind of one of those deals. When you look at Swiss firearms in terms of production numbers, it really is a production numbers game, guys. Because when you look at the, the way that you determine the rarity of a gun, sometimes comes down to production numbers. So when you look at a mass-produced pistol or a mass-produced rifle that there's millions and millions of them, there may not be millions and millions of these. Dare I say way less than that. So just that, for one, the engineering and the quality that goes in the manufacture of a lot of these Swiss, you know, rifles and pistols is bar none, just awesome quality. But then you also, uh, you add the fact that there's a very limited number of them and that, that makes the demand higher. You know, obviously the uh, supply is lower, so that's going to drive, you know, the price up a bit. And that's just how this kind of stuff goes. You're getting into some of the like really awesome rare collectibles and uh, they do have a price tag associated with them. But uh for those of you that are interested in engineering and just cool stuff, you can certainly appreciate the uh, beauty and simplicity of this pistol and the performance of this pistol. So thank you for watching today's video. We appreciate all of you. Make sure you follow us over on Facebook. Uh, we always post you know, all kind of random behind the scenes photos, articles, things that we have going on. Uh, guys, if you love the channel, consider uh, donating a buck or two on Patreon. It helps uh, support our efforts moving forward or maybe purchase a man can if you uh, see fit. That's another way you can support the channel. Um, also guys, if you like t-shirts over on Force for Freedom, we got a bunch of great t-shirts over there. Check one out. Every purchase that you make helps uh, support the channel. Guys, thank you so much for watching today again. We'll see you. Have a great day.